Born on the 2nd of February in 1960 London, Fred de Guas spent the first two years of his life with his parents before their divorce a few years later. Father Malcolm Frederick de Guas and mother Kathleen Agatha Messiah were both immigrants from what was then known as British Guiana. At age two, de Guas and his older brother were sent to live with their grandparents in Guiana. This was in part due to their parents' financial situation, which was not ideal to support them. The time he spent living in Guyana was a driving influence for his work, as seen in his poetry in Airy Hall. De Guas looks at the post-colonial history of Guyana, as well as detailing his own familiarities and experience living there. De Guas lived there for a total of 10 years, from 1962 to 1972, before returning to Britain at age 12. Growing up in Guyana during the 60s meant he was exposed to many instances of racial and political adversity making this a key influence for many of his works, including British Subjects and Dear Future. His grandmother was also a driving influence for his work, as is evident in his first published piece, Mama Dot, a collection of poetry which centres around an archetypal and metaphorical grandmother figure who is in touch with her past in Africa. De Guas also took African and Caribbean studies at the University of Kent, this education clearly paid off as the influence of his knowledge of this topic is very clearly prominent in his writing, especially when detailing the roles of slaves and slaveholders in The Longest Memory. Whilst it wasn't his first published piece, The Longest Memory was his first published novella. Surrounding themes of slavery, race, prejudice and power, and discussing the cruel treatment of slaves during the time period, which was between 1790 and 1810 pre-Civil War America. The novella also takes us into the minds of different characters. De Gua does this by including a chain of voices, a literary technique which presents each character's different opinions and thus brings forth their different points of view, allowing readers to assess every side of the story. De Gua also uses different styles of writing to capture the personalities of each character. A poet at heart, De Gua included elements of poetry in Chapter 5, Chapel, to represent the character's growth and education. During the time period, slaves were not allowed to be educated and were prohibited from reading and writing in particular, as they were seen only as workers and had to be made to feel dependent on their owner. This is evident in the novella's protagonist, the centurion Whitechapel, a slave of Mr. Whitechapel, who'd been with him for so long he felt a sense of loyalty to him. As well as this, the difference in generation and life experience between the two characters is seen evidently throughout the text with quotes such as this one from Chapel's point of view. Thinks freedom is death, thinks paradise is afterlife. It is because of this treatment of slaves both in real life and within the text that Chapel's education is such an important element of the novella and freedom is such a key theme. The forbidden friendship and eventual love between Lydia and Chapel is also a key illustration of this, as not only does Lydia, Mr. Whitechapel's daughter, educate Chapel, but she also falls in love with him, both things that were heavily frowned upon at the time. All events in the novella are tied together, with each character's desires and motivations acting as a domino effect, causing the chain of events that happen within the novella. With cause and effect being such a prominent element of the novella, de Guas' writing style and use of different points of view epitomizes the drastic consequences of each character's actions, leading to major events within the text, such as the death of Chapel.